to the select board for what is today? 15. January 15th. We're now getting into winter and we still haven't had any snow. So that's to get some. <laughs> yes. Okay, I won't jinx us. Um, announcements. Mr. Franco, I understand you have an announcement? I just wanted to remind uh, uh, this board and our best TV audience about uh, a meeting tomorrow evening, uh, an open house related to the Boyle Century Corridor Planning Study, which uh, I know has been a long-term topic of conversation in this community. Um, my understanding is that uh, there's going to be a, an open house and some conversation about work that's taken place uh, in this uh, in this building, Town Hall, room 103, uh, starting at 7, lasting till 9 o'clock tomorrow night. I plan to attend, and I think others will, uh, will be there as well. Okay. Any other uh, announcements? Um, Select person green. I, I think there's a Martin Luther King celebration oh, on sorry. Monday. <laughs> I know you've been spearheading that. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> On Monday, uh, January 21st, our annual Martin Luther King Jr. celebration event will occur at the Coolidge Corner Theater. Uh, it's going to be an incredible um, uh, program this year, uh, starting mainly uh, because of a film, interviews of um, a number of uh, Brookline residents, including Bobby Nabel, who we all know from the advisory committee, Michael Dukakis. Um, and, uh, and others talking about their experiences uh, during the civil rights era um, and you know, their recollections of uh, events at that time, including here in Brookline. After that, uh, I will be interviewing Patricia Wynn, who is, a, uh, who is the editor of the Spotlight team at The Globe, uh, who did uh, the series on race in uh, December of 2017. And what we're going to uh, hopefully do is to uh, provide some um, uh, reflections on, you know, uh, the, the experiences of the interviewees in, in the film uh, and you know, how we have uh, progressed since that time, the 1950s, 1960s, to today. So it should be a very interesting program. Uh, also, as, as people will be um, happy to know, Reggie Gibson will also be performing. He's going to have a, 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 an unusual or different performance. It's not just a poetry reading, but he, he's going to have a soprano and a, a string trio that will be uh, providing music uh, composed for the purposes of a bigger program that he uh, has put together. Uh, involving the words of Martin Luther King. It's called In His Own Words. It should be an incredible, incredible experience. Um, the Testosterones from Brookline High School will also be performing, as well as our um, uh, Poet Laureate, uh, Z. Sussling. So it's an incredible program. It's probably sold out by now, but if you're interested, go to Eventbrite and, um, and, and uh, at least put your name in for tickets. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. Um, <laughs> so subtly, too. <laughs> I, I've been in court as a juror for the last couple of days, so I'm trying to get back into the normal world. Right. Okay. Uh, let's delve into our uh, calendar. Um, we have minutes from January 2nd. Anyone have any changes? So I'll move uh, the minutes for January 2nd. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Green. Aye. <laughs> and the chair votes aye. Ah, yeah. Okay, anyone? I skipped public comment. Anyone here for public comment? Okay. Sorry about that. Um, next item is a question of approving a contract with R.D. Kimball doing business as NV5, in the amount of $277,981 for designer services related to the Brookline High School expansion project. Mr. Masek. Yes, this is uh, for commissioning services uh, that's sorely uh, needed. What does that mean? That means they check the operation in the building to make sure it's operating in 
So this is at the end. This is at the end of the project. Ooh. But you bring them on early so that they can do uh, design, design reviews throughout and really be fully engaged so they understand what they're uh, testing at the end of the project. Cool. Okay. We're looking ahead. Right. I mean, it, it, in some ways, it reminds me of the uh, effort to bring a construction manager on early, you know, because you get a better product in the end if you have people who really understand the systems and have been a part of designing them. As, as someone who's commissioned most of the buildings, it is an important um, tool to have on mm -hmm. early. Mm -hmm. Right, and this is a big project, so it's good to have many eyes on, right. uh, on the design. Okay, uh, any questions for Mr. Masak? I'll, I'll move that we approve the contract with R.D. Kimball doing business as NV5 in the amount of $277,981 for designer services related to the Brookline High School Expansion Project. All those in favor, please say aye. Select Person Franco. Aye. Select Person Heller. Aye. Select Person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. We have a committee of seven, and this is uh, related to the Baldwin and Driscoll School uh, for an owner's uh, project manager. Um, do I see any volunteers, Mr. Green? I'd like to do that. Okay. You're, you're, I'm it. You're it. I'll move that we appoint. Oh, you don't like that? Oh, I love it. Oh, great. <laughs> I'll move that we appoint Select Person Green to be the uh, uh, chairperson of the uh, owner's project manager service committee of seven for owner project manager services related to the Baldwin and Driscoll School projects. All those in favor, please say aye. Select Person Franco. Aye. Select Person Heller. Aye. Select Person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Can I, can I just make a comment on sure. that previous agenda item? I, I'm heartened to see that uh, within this, uh, this package, um, there's some mention of the, uh, the need for some lead familiarity and in, uh, in green, um, green expertise. I know that um, this has been a long time coming together, and I'm glad that um, we sort of are responsive to town meeting's wishes. So thank you, Mr. Mazak, for that. Okay. Okay, and uh, next item is a question of approving the procurement of proprietary items for the Brookline High School expansion project. Mr. Mazak. Uh, this is a standard boat project by project and we bring these same items to you uh, it's specific it has to be project specific so these are the typical items um, mainly centered around the doors uh, the fire alarm panels and the temperature control systems and also I believe there's one more uh, LW bills which is another fire department related um, item yeah so this is so we can have common uh uh, alarm systems, uh, HVAC controls, so it makes uh, maintenance easier. Um, True master key across. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's especially to be able to have a common it's very keys. important when a fire department comes in that they see the same box. Right. The, uh, right. Building. Makes absolute sense to me. Any questions on this item? I'll move that we, where is this? We approve the procurement of proprietary items for the Brookline High School Expansion Project. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Um, that's it. Thank you. And uh, next up is uh, Chief Lipson. Uh, and this is. Uh, Accepting a grant uh, from the state's E911 program uh, in the amount of 185634 Chief Lipson. Uh, good evening. I'm uh, pleased to be before the board tonight to request your approval for a state E911 grant uh, in the amount, as you said, of 185634 It will be used primarily for uh, personnel costs as well as uh, dispatch furniture and cleaning of the dispatch consoles in the center. I've got to ask what a 24-7 chair is for the dispatch center. Uh, a 24-7 chair is basically a category of chair that is uh, ergonomic and 
uh, built for intent use. It's like a heavy duty, extreme chair. Great for your back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's a good one. <laughs> so uh, I have one other question. Uh, maintenance and intensive cleaning, I assume this is a special cleaning? Don't, you, don't we have a budget for just ongoing regular maintenance and cleaning? It is. Okay. Uh, this is a special company that's contracted to come in. I would equate it to like having your car detailed. They mm -hmm. get in and vacuum out all the keyboards and mouses and consoles. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay. and they have to do it while the center is, is in operation. Is operation. Yeah. And they have to know not to do certain things, which kind blows it up. Off and stuff like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So I'll move that we accept this grant from the state E911 grant program in the amount of 185634 All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. And next up is... Uh, Mr. Russell, and this is uh, um, an amending an existing contract for on-call stormwater consulting services with Brown and Caldwell in the amount of 284846. What's evening. going on? Good evening. Um, real briefly, uh, back in 2016, EPA issued us the Phase Two MS4 permit to replace the 2003 permit. So essentially, we were on year 16 of a five-year permit. Anyway, um, so and it's 2016, they got a lot of comments, a lot of questions from municipalities. They put it, they actually put it to stay on the permit and then reissued it in 2018 in this past July. Um, if the board recalls, back in 2014, we went out for a request for qualifications for stormwater consulting on call services, and we selected Brown and Caldwell. Um, their master services contract, is, it was a three-year contract that has since expired, so we have to renew that and then let them take us into the next phase under the new permit. Okay. Any questions from the board? None? And I'll move that we amend the contract for on-call stormwater consulting services. Task orders one through five with Brown and Caldwell in the amount of 284 846. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And next up is uh, the team. Mr. Ditto. Um, question of approving a change order in the amount of 23,711 and 13 cents um, in connection with a contract for the backfill. Back landfill closure and reuse projects with Jay Bates and Son. Okay, and we have a, a show. Um, before we get going, I just want to make sure. This is Jay Hershey, our environmental engineer. He was the uh, project engineer and project manager on all the landfill. Closure uh, contracts. He's, he's doing a great job. He did a great job, and um, uh, it's kind of bittersweet. We've been doing this for over 20 years, and now it's coming to a close. So it was a great, you know, we were working hard and learning a lot. And, you know, that's all coming to an end. But we have a great facility out there. And uh, I just want to make sure, sure Jim gets his uh, recognition. That being said, uh, we have a video here that's kind of neat that I'd like to play, and then we have a couple of still shots, and I'd like to go out and point out where some of the operations are going to take place on the landfill. Okay. That's the so-called rear landfill there. That's the rear landfill there now. So uh, where where the video started was Skyline Park. That was Skyline okay. Park. Why don't you do it over? And yeah. Play it again. So that's Skyline. Skyline Park. And this is the rear landfill. Okay, and it's the TPW operations there. Mm -hmm. The transfer station. 
And then all the way to the... Uh, we have some photos. I think okay. Probably, uh, then all the way to the left, after, as it, it looks like there's a clearing. It's not right there. Yeah. So all the way at the bottom left, what, what is that? Okay, so this is conservation land. Right through here. Ah. And that's conservation land. Yeah. And that's Lost Pond? Right, that's the hazardous waste collection. Yes. Since then, that's been moved. Kevin Johnson decided it would be better off to move it over here. So if you go up there now, you'll see all these uh, pieces of equipment over here. So along this wall, we have bins, and it's construction material. C come back so our TV audience can hear you. To the to the mic, Peter. <laughs> Thanks. And things that will be taking place uh, are uh, that's where we recycle our concrete and the asphalt pavements. Uh, when the town DPW does some utility work, we take those materials, stockpile them up here, and once a year we hire a crusher. And they come in for about a week, and uh, they crush the concrete, and make crushed stone out of that. Yeah, same thing with the asphalt; we crush that and then mix it in with with the uh, crushed concrete. Um, we also will be doing um, we process our leaves and uh, wood chips from this location. Uh, the leaf dump right now is down uh, in the, as far right as you can go on, on the black pavement. Um, we're also going to uh, conduct the household hazardous waste day again in a new location, but that will be starting up uh, in the first week in May, and it runs through the last week in October. And that's every what? Thursday, Thursday, every Thursday. Um, we also uh, process uh, steel, uh, the so-called white goods, which are dishwashers, washing machines. We recycle that from the site also. The, um, it's also going to be a, a large uh, storage area for us, which we need very badly. And uh, what I said earlier, the materials that we have stockpiled in bins along this lower wall include crushed stone, loam, mulch, fiber, which are the wood chips that go underneath the, string, the swings in our parks. We also have compost up there and then gravel. Where do you take the processed uh, concrete um, asphalt and other? It, it's stockpiled there. It, we have a, a bin that's no. probably about the size of this room. Do we use it? You crush it and reuse it and it's fill. Yeah, we use that as backfill for all our trenches in the, in the public way. Hmm. Uh, and for equipment, there's quite a bit of equipment up being stored there now, and that includes snow plows, backhoes, loaders, bobcats and drop off uh, containers. So there's a lot of activity up there right now and it's, um, it's really nice to have a, a site that you can work with and um, that's that. So this extra work order is, um, we uh, exceeded our, our budget for pavement and it, by uh, 21,000 roughly dollars. Um, there's sufficient money in the appropriation to cover this uh, extra work order 
And when you think of the overall cost of this project, which was oh, what, three, three seven, and this is the uh, the override the overrun twenty one thousand. It's very de minimis. So this is the last bill we're going to see on the landfill. Well, we're still going to be. Uh, we have to do monitoring, be able to read reports. Right, so but from fr from the project itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's a DEP requirement. So we're asking approval of that extra work order. Okay. Any questions? Okay. This, uh, as Mr. Ditto said, this has been a project long in the making, uh, seeing it come to a conclusion. And um, that's uh, great. I think this, is, this project's been going on as long as I've been involved in town government. So, yeah. yeah. Not much. We spent $18 million on construction and another $4 million on consultant services. So this is approximately $22 million worth of work. Right. Okay. Wow. Cool. Um, okay. So I will move that we approve the change order in the amount of $23,711.13 in connection with the contract for back, back landfill closure and reuse project uh, with J. Bates and Son. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a temporary license. Uh, this is uh, all kinds of alcoholic beverage, non sales to Lars Anderson Auto Museum at 15 Newton Street for a 50th birthday party to be held on Saturday, January 26th from 6 to 11 p.m. And paperwork appears in order. Yeah, the police department has reviewed the paperwork and sees no reason to deny the application. Okay. So I'll move that we grant this uh, temporary license. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. Next up uh, is uh, the BAA uh, here to request a special uh, use permit for the running of the 2019 Boston Marathon. It's uh, funny to be thinking about uh, Boston Marathon in the middle of uh, January, and you're not Stuart Wall. Uh, I'm glad someone noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I am not Stuart Wall. Um, nope. Uh, good evening. My name is Lauren Prochan. I'm the new director of operations at the Boston Athletic Association. Had been in the position about uh, four months, but have been working alongside of the BAA and Boston Special Events and Specifics um, for much longer than I'd like to admit. So <laughs> thank you for having me here this evening. Um, as you mentioned, the intention is for us to move to approval to hold the 2019 Boston Marathon. Um, we are looking to operate within the same footprint as in previous years. So at any point, stop me if you've heard this before. I'm happy to skip over kind of the... No, well, the, the public should hear. Please, by all means. So uh, as in the past, we're looking to have the same 30,000 participants as in um, historic year going backwards with the earliest wave leaving Hopkinton at 6 a.m. and the final wave leaving at 11.15, the first one being the military march and then our wave four being mainly um, our charity runners. So there is still a six hour time limit. Um, the last runner is expected to finish in Boston at 5.30 p.m. Runners will enter Brookline on Beacon Street from Cleveland Circle and exit into the Audubon Circle um, and are expected to be in Brookline from approximately 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, with expected road closures from 9 a.m. to 5.45 p.m. Um, there are still the same four medical tents and two hydration stations at mile markers number 23 and 4. Most importantly, we will still have our three um, pedestrian crossing points. Those are located at Beacon and Tappan, Beacon and Webster, and Beacon and Hog Street. So those will still be fully functional and operational um, as, in the, as they have in years past. Uh, we are continuing to work with Brockli uh, Brookline PD, fire and emergency services, as well as our state partners to ensure that the course is fully supported um, in all three areas of our jurisdiction. We're also working to um, be more involved with our local EOCs to make sure that their requests and needs are being filtered through the, our um, JCC and Boston Operations Center 
to make sure that we're filling those needs in a more expeditious manner than years past. From what I'm told, it rained last year, so it kind of threw uh, a wrench in our plans in some areas, cities, and towns. But if anything, it made us realize that there were some deficiencies and holes in our um, previously organized um, manner. And so it, that rain, that biblical rain, has made us really focus on a few main areas that we can improve the erase. So where I would never wish that event to happen again in the same manner, um, we are grateful that it did happen because it actually showed some of our strength, our weaknesses and where we can improve. Um, so uh, other than that, the event will kind of go along the same pathway, no major changes on roadways, um, but nothing else at this time to report uh, for the Boston Marathon. Okay, so it's pretty much uh, operationally for the town and the residents of the town, it's pretty much the same exactly right. as uh, last year. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, and I think uh, things went pretty smoothly from an operations perspective. I cannot predict the weather, unfortunately, right. so please don't ask That me. we have no control over. Not yet. Uh, right. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> um, any questions from the board? I'll give thanks. Um, we, as I'm sure you know, have a successful charity program here in town where we sort of band together all the numbers that we get as a, uh, a host community, or one of the host communities in the marathon. So thank you for allowing us to do that and do some good for um, local nonprofits who, who serve the citizens of Brooklyn. That's exactly what they're for. We're so glad to hear that it goes to the right place. So thank you. Um, okay. So uh, I will move that we um, do what? We, we grant the special <laughs> use permit. <laughs> You're getting nervous. I'd be the shortest lived ops director in BAA history <laughs> if you said no. So. For the running of the 2019 Boston Marathon schedule for April 15th. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, uh, the next item is postponed uh, removal of a public uh, shade tree. That was uh, going to be a hearing on uh, um, a little disagreement between our uh, tree warden and a homeowner. But that'll happen probably next week. I think, it's, I think it might actually happen two weeks from today. Or in two weeks, okay. Um, next item on the calendar is a question of approving the purchase and sale agreement for the properties located at 15 to 19 Oak Street. And uh, we had a uh, discussion of this in the executive session um, that we've uh, reached agreement with the homeowners. Um, and the terms are uh, pretty much as uh, agreed to in the offer. Nothing's, nothing's changed pretty much. And uh, uh, the delay was uh, just some of the legal details. So uh, we're on track, and uh, the town is obligated by virtue of, uh, of the town meeting vote to uh, purchase the, uh, the Oak Street property, so we're doing that. So uh, do, do we need another vote? I don't believe so. You should just disclose that you did vote in executive session. Okay. So we disclosed it. So um, we... We've noticed a 7.30 public hearing. What I'm going to do is move up the budget objectives, which is the last item on our agenda. So Mr. Casanova Davis, your maiden voyage on this item. On this item, yes. Good evening, Justin Casanova Davis, Assistant Administrator. I'm here before you with a list of the fiscal year 20 select board budget objectives, getting your feedback. Um, it's a, it's a com compilation of different departmental objectives that tells a lot of the good work that we're doing in town. And I just want your feedback so we can get us approved on the next select board. Okay. I couldn't find mention of the high school project. Did I miss it? High school project. We mentioned it just in the first bit of the overview. Uh, or the second bit of overview of CIP, um, I can specifically mention the high school project? I think you should, since it's the biggest project the town 
has ever done in terms of money. So, yeah, it, it deserves its own bullet. Uh, could I make a, con yeah. a suggestion? I think that um, one of the things about this document has gotten, you know, longer and long. every year that I've been on the board. It yeah. seems to add a few uh, and not take away too many. So I'm wondering whether we could have some organization of it that would have some subheadings. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, suggestion. for instance, I'm trying to look for the energy issues and, uh, you know, they're, they're down here, number 34, I think yep. it begins. But I think it would, it would be a good idea. I know that there will be some overlapping ones and maybe yep. you can just refer to those or, you know, figure out some way to, to talk about it, but uh, by, either by department or by program um, to, uh, to organize it in that way, I think would be helpful for us and also for the public, who, people who are trying to read it and want to see what um, so that's the first comment I have. The second is that on the energy issues, um, the, uh, there are um, numbers 34 through 38 uh, talk about uh, our energy uh, policies, solar facilities, uh, energy reduction plans, fossil fuel, fuel free opportunities, etc. Um, the one thing I don't see in here, and I believe we should address, is the issue of an all-electric fleet or a hybrid fleet of cars. We, uh, I know that the building department is working on this issue, and I think we should, A, acknowledge that, and B, understand that, that, that it's a goal of ours to have... Uh, a fleet that's more environmentally uh, friendly. So uh, you can add it, I think, to number 36, um, is develop a, a, a planned transition to all electric vehicles for all, all town-owned vehicles. And I'm not just thinking of the cars. I know right now there are probably no fire trucks that are uh, electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles, but you know, I think in the future there may be. Yep. And so I think we ought to be able to keep our eyes out, uh, not only fire trucks, but police cars and police vans and, you know, everything we use yep. um, in the vehicle department. So uh, I believe we should add that. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I also made some changes. Uh, it's consistent with uh, what select person Heller uh, suggested in her first uh, suggestion uh, with respect to the diversity issues. Um, and I, I didn't circulate it to the entire board for open meeting purposes, but uh, I assumed that would get out to people. And what I basically did was to take 8, 9, and 10 and, uh, first of all, separate um, uh, 8 into um, a, sec a section that says to provide excellent government services that effectively address the needs of all citizens. And then separate from that, uh, include the diversity issues in a new section nine. Um, and like I said, it will be circulated to the board. But what I wanted to do was try to sort of make those issues a little more focused and clear and specific in terms of what we want to do. Um, at, so I have five uh, subsections under um, a new section it's uh, labeled to integrate diversity and inclusion into the town's services and planning, and then including five uh, specific uh, items. So. Thank you. So I've got a couple of comments. Um, I think uh, in the second bullet point of number one, we should reference the fact that there was a 2017 override study committee. I, <laughs> I, think, I think it was much a continuation of the work of 2014, but I think we just need to sort of check the box there and <laughs> acknowledge that. So it we should say build on the work of the 2014 and 17 override study committees in the plural. Um, <laughs> I think in seven, I would uh, I would strike the word continue and replace it with abide by. I think um, this I is a, the what? abide by or oh, some bye -bye. variation of that. I bring this up because it's a, a topic that I think the, the BFAC committee is going to want to discuss, and um, I think we just need to uh, 
make that language change a little um, to, to provide some clarity about where the board is. Um, in in f number 15, um, regarding um, marijuana, recreational marijuana, I think we need to reference um, some of our local bylaws and town meeting decisions. It's not just the regulations of the Cannabis Control Commission, also actions of town meeting. Um, in uh, uh, around number 30, um, I don't see a reference to the land bank committee that um, right. so yeah. one person uh, Heller is chairing and um, whether it's in 30 or in a, a, a different bullet point, I think select we just need to Hamilton. Hamilton, excuse me. I want to give everything to select person <laughs> Heller, <job>. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Run you ragged. Yeah. Um, we just need to, uh, I think, uh, add that committee to the to yep, budget of Which one is that? Land. The, the, land the land bank, bank committee. committee. Um, and then my final comment is um, I think just before or just after number 31, we should add an objective around the creation of um, senior housing um, and perhaps even reference some of the, uh, the, the um, Jewish community um, housing for the elderly project at KI. Now called to life. To life. Could you could you collapse that with number thirty? I have no objection to that. Okay. Um, I think we need to be thinking about uh, the regulation and taxation of short-term rentals. We now have that ability. We need to be uh, thinking about that going forward. And uh, we should have a reference in here to whatever is going to happen at Newberry College. Mm -hmm. That should be a budget priority because it may affect our budget. If we're successful. Or even if we're not successful, yeah. it's going the, then, then the issue becomes one of ha a regula regulation of land use. Mm -hmm. So one way or another, we need to be thinking about Newberry College. Oh, absolutely. And that's kind of all I had. So it's our practice to uh, consider these and then bring back a, a revised one. We'll do that in the uh, break those up into the functional categories and hopefully it'll be a little bit more readable and follow it better. And uh, so we'll bring that to your, uh, for your approval next week. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Okay. And I declare it to be 730. It's close enough. We, <laughs> we dropped the word approximately from calendar. We've got to put that word back in. Um, okay. So now we have a public hearing on the petition of Verizon New England and NSTAR Electric doing business as Eversource for permission to relocate a joint pole and two petitions of Eversource to construct locations for such lines and conduits and manholes. And this is on uh, Thorndike Street, um, uh, 45 feet northwest of Harvard. Um, well, it's all on Thorndike Street. So who's here from Verizon or NSTAR or both? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Steve Bigley. I work for Utility Consultant Synergetics. I'm a contractor for Verizon, and I'm here to represent Verizon's interest in the petition to relocate Pole 7 on Thorndike Street. Okay, so uh, why don't you describe the project and describe the impact on the abutters? Um, uh, there is a, a new building going up, 455 Harvard um, condos, and apparently, from what I understand, this pole uh, is constricting egress and access to a parking area. So they're going to move the pole 45 feet in a northerly direction. There's a tree there. I don't know if the tree's coming down or not. I drove by the spot on the way in here this evening. Um, but the pole will be placed in a grassy strip between a curbstone and a sidewalk that is currently in just 45 feet more north. Um, so
So you're going to be digging the street up? No. Oh. Eversource will be digging the street up to place the condo. <laughs> the people you represent will be digging the street up. Yeah, Verizon. Ver Eversource is going to dig it up, not Verizon. Verizon replaces the pole. Eversource is placed in the condo. So is anyone from uh, Eversource here? Okay. Uh, that's too bad because I'm always concerned when they're digging up a street about whether or not there's gas leaks on that street and whether they've coordinated as we have requested time and time again with the gas company, especially now the strike is over and they should be attending to these things. So we can't have an answer um, and I would like an answer to that question. Glad you brought that up. When I visited the site on the way here this evening, there was a distinct and strong smell of gas on site. Ooh. Okay, so that's a good reason why we need Eversource here to talk about this issue. Furthermore, I, I would like to suggest that if we vote on this, I, I don't want to vote on it without Eversource here, frankly. I don't either. Um, but when we vote on this, uh, you know, you mentioned this issue about, about the tree. Uh, I want it to be clear, uh, my concern is that the tree warden must be involved in the evaluation of whether that tree should come down. I am reluctant to have any tree come down on the public way. Uh, we value our trees here, and um, I would want his agreement that it's diseased or in some other way should a danger to the public and that's some other way. Otherwise, got to find another way around it. And that's up to the tree warden. Right. Um, I think a utility asking to dig up our streets and they don't show up for their hearing is, uh, if nothing else, rude. And I don't think we should uh, grant it until they can come and explain uh, the impact on our street, uh, uh, look us in the eye and say they're going to restore the pavement to uh, uh, the condition it's in and uh, uh, notify the gas company of the gas leak and have them come fix it. Right. And, before, and, you know, and notify a butters and do whatever else they need to do. And uh, I don't think this has ever happened, at least not in my term on the board. So, uh, if they, if they want a permit, they better show up. So I am going to table this. Sorry. Okay. Um, I'd like to know how that impacts um, your company. Uh, we would normally just wait for the proper procedures uh, for the town to get approved to place, replace the pole. It may hold up some of the construction um, for the for the new building, but as far as Verizon is concerned, we'll just schedule another appointment and come out and address it properly. Right, you guys came. <laughs> Thank you. Is, uh, is 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 there a separate thing we can do for Verizon so they don't have to show up again? I was under the impression there were two separate petitions: one for Condo and one for Paul. But Verizon the share for the Paul. Yeah, they're, they're kind of bundled together on our calendar. But I do think there are separate petitions. Peter, can you help us with this? Peter? Yeah, but if you go to A7, order for joint poll re relocation, it's Verizon and NSTAR doing this. Both utilities have interest in the pole. Verizon owns the maintenance of the pole. Therefore so the, the uh, okay. So for the first one, is there any digging? There will be digging. We'll dig a hole and put a new pole in. But there. there's uh, the, the permit is for conduits and manholes, and the pole. Peter, well, but can you help? But if they're going to dig a hole for a new pole, assuming they're going to dig it near that tree. I don't want them to dig near the tree in this. Well, I, tree I, I don't mean to mislead you that the tree is an issue. I, I visited the site this evening, and there is a tree between where the pole is and where it's proposed to be. Eversource to install 153 feet of conduit to Verizon's pole. So the conduit is, is part of this. Yeah. 
Yes, the pole has to be in the place that we asked in order for them to place the conduit. Right. So. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think Verizon has to come back because they're they're just doing. It, it's 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 Eversource who's digging our street up. But, but in Verizon digging the hole for the, their pole? Yeah, but they don't need a special permit for that. Um, I don't I don't know what else to say. I don't I don't see how we can grant it. Uh, okay. So. Thanks. I'll let them know. Thanks for yeah. your consideration. Sorry. But but uh, for next hearing or when this comes up again, oh, Verizon I assume doesn't have So to we come we we would Yeah, Verizon doesn't have to come back. So we should let them know. Um so the, the next one is on Coolidge Street. Is that the same project? And sorry, still not here. <laughs> right. Hello. Hello, my name is Danny Dinesh. I'm with the uh, development team. Right. Uh, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Uh, we're, we're not taking down any trees. Uh, we, we are keeping all the trees there. Uh, we're moving the pole up the street a little bit because the existing pole is in very bad condition and it is within uh, like five feet of our the building that we're putting up <clears throat> so we're trying to move it down where there's where there's a bigger setback from the property and um, the engineering department of this town has seen it everyone has seen it it's just I guess that didn't that uh, ever source didn't show up today but it has nothing, nothing to do with the tree Okay. And the and the, the digging will be in the street, and not on the sidewalk where the trees are. Right, that's the problem. Right. They're they're, so I wanna, I they're going to, to destroy our street, and we want them here so we can look them in the eye and tell them they got to put it back. I understand. But, but, but that. the condo is not going uh, into the area where the tree roots would be. Right. Correct. I just wanted to clarify that. And what, right. what about the homeowner uh, to where the pole is being moved? Have it, they been notified? The the pole is, is will still be in front of 455 Harbor Street, just moving a little bit further away from Harbor Street. And I Street. assume you're absor absor absorbing the cost of this? Correct. I mean, we're putting in a new, like, much better pole in. So you're absorbing the cost Correct. of uh, and tearing up the street as well? Correct. How about fixing a gas leak? <laughs> There's too many of those. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. S sorry about that, guys. But uh, so we continue the hearing. So we we're continuing the hearing. That's the formal. Uh, do we have to do a vote or just continue the hearing? Okay. Um, okay, so um, uh, special town meeting, um, we've, uh, so did you open that second hearing? And oh, okay, so I need to open the second hearing, item 13, a public hearing on the petition of NSTAR Electric doing business as Eversource Energy for permission to construct the location and such line of conduits and manholes on Coolidge Street. That's item 13. I last call for NSTAR. They're not here. We'll table. We'll continue this item too. That's actually never happened where the utility didn't show up. Okay. So let's talk about uh, town meetings. So, of course, we've received a petition to call a special town meeting signed by 200, more than 200 voters with a specific um, uh, warrant article uh, to see if the town will raise an appropriate transfer sum of money to fund the cost of adequate, adequate to appropriate some or all of the, col the Newberry College property, a property situated in elementary school 
Uh, that's a very narrow uh, warrant article for a very specific purpose, um, and we will do what uh, we're legally required to do and, and uh, call a special town meeting. We will set the date and sign the warrant uh, next week. We're not prepared to do that tonight. Um, since then, we've also received a petition uh, with lead petitioners Paula Friedman and John Harris for a resolution, which is a bit more broadly worded. Um, um, what I think, I, I, I think um, town meeting should be able to consider the resolution, um, but we'll the, the, we'll find the procedural way to, to have that happen. Uh, what I suspect, what I'll suggest to my colleagues is uh, we'll, we'll probably wind up calling two special town meetings, a, a special within the special, I guess, because uh, the, the way the wording of the, of the, uh, uh, the enabling legislation, we're, according to town council, we're limited to the petition to be in that special town meeting so to consider anything else, we would need another town meeting. And there may be, I, I know of at least one other warrant article we might want to put on there, um, and perhaps others. Um, on the same evening. On the same evening. So, uh, uh, which brings us to uh, the reserve fund transfer. Um, to call a special town meeting, it costs money. Um, so we, we need to uh, pay for it, and it's not in the budget. So the way we need to pay for it is uh, by transmitting a request for a transfer uh, from the uh, uh, reserve fund. And uh, I, the town clerk has given us a $8,000 number, $8,000 a night. So we're assuming a one-night town meeting um, for $8,000. So I will move that we authorize a request for a transfer to fund a special town meeting for $8,000. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, so uh, the action on the special town meeting will happen um, next week. So. The next item, and it's the last item we have for tonight, is the question of establishing a Newberry College Advisory Committee, setting a charge and making appointments. And I know there's been a lot of um, attention to this. I know on the uh, town meeting members uh, listserv, and I know there's a lot of uh, uh, folks who are interested in this. And of course, every, everyone by now knows that uh, Newberry College um, has announced that they are closing, and the word that we've heard from them is that they will be um, considering uh, uh, selling their campus, which provides the town with some opportunities and some risks. Um, and I think uh, the opportunity is uh, it's very rare that uh, such a large tract of land in this town becomes available. So I think uh, we need to consider whether we're, whether we're uh, interested in uh, uh, making a bid uh, for the property. And it's not something we do every day, so I think uh, it's, it's uh, something we need some help with. Um, the word that we're getting is this is going to be happening pretty quickly. Uh, the college, uh, we've heard, is now in the process of engaging a broker, and, uh, and that's when stuff will start happening. Uh, we, we don't know exactly when, but uh, uh, we need to be prepared, and we need to start thinking about it uh, now. So um, I'm going to be, uh, I, I've been working with uh, select board member uh, Heller, uh, to draft a charge uh, for a committee to help us. And uh, the charge uh, has uh, the committee advisory to the select board with a purpose to examine 
analyze and report on the legal, procedural, and financial issues, as well as provide strategic advice and a preliminary use out analysis for the possible acquisition of some or all of Newberry College. Uh, the committee will support the acquisition phase, phase of the property. The committee will not be advising the select board on the ultimate use of the property. And that would be determined through a future planning process should the town successfully acquire the property. Additionally, should the town not su be successful, a uh, future planning process would consider land use regulation strategies. Um, we're going to be requesting a reserve fund transfer of $150,000 to support the work of this committee. And we're hoping to use that for various uh, professional services to include things like uh, legal uh, appraisal, um, some architectural services uh, to determine uh, uh, whether certain things can happen on that property. And the committee will help us uh, determine uh, uh, which professional services will be required. And we're also asking in the charge that uh, this proposed charge that the committee hold at least uh, one public hearing prior to delivering its final report to the board. Uh, and the report, they're going, the committee is going to be looking at uh, legal issues, including assessment of known restrictions, title search, uh, easements, uh, also looking at legal aspects of acquisition, um, how much specificity do we need uh, uh, to, to meet the uh, procurement laws, um, can we, should we partner with another organization, restrictions, uh, potentially selling off if we were to purchase. Prior to knowing exactly what we wanted to do with the property, we may determine certain pieces of it are excess. Can, can we sell it off? Uh, and then acquisition uh, structures. Uh, the committee will also be in charge of looking at uh, an assessment of site conditions. Uh, what are the conditions of the uh, buildings? Uh, and some preliminary uh, 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 assessment of possible uses, including uh, a site for a school. Uh, including a test fit of a uh, uh, two and three section elementary school, um, facilities for BEEP, uh, potential office space, relocation of existing rentals, open space, affordable housing, senior housing, other municipal s facilities, including a senior center, a satellite senior center, and wh whatever else. An extremely important uh, piece of this is going to be determination of acquisition strategy and how to best engage with the acquisition process. Uh, bid strategy, preparation of a bid, consideration of other uh, competition uh, uh, for the bid, and uh, how best to compete, con and, cons and even considerations of reasons not to purchase the property, and consideration of partnership opportunities. Um, Lastly, uh, we're asking uh, the committee to look at cost and financing options and to oversee a value assessment of the property, uh, assistance in preparation of an offer and bid package, and an examination of finance options, um, including uh, uh, how much of it, if any, can be funded through the CIP. Uh, will we need a debt exclusion override? Uh, how much can be funded by redirection of existing rental payments or, or anything else. So the committee that uh, I'm going to be proposing is the following. Um, chaired by myself with an alternate of uh, uh, select person Heller. And the reason we're doing that is in the coming months, due to personal reasons, I may not be in town very much. Um, Steve Hyken from the Planning Board, Ranch Kimball, uh, who's a gentleman I've met through the, uh, his involvement in the Waxies, uh, um, uh, what's going on over there. But he's, um, 
he, he's the former uh, chairman of the board of Wheelock College when they were uh, merging with BU, and he's also on the BU Board of Trustees. So he brings a really important per perspective. Um, Janet Fearman on our building commission, she brings, uh, uh, she's a lawyer um, and has done deals, and she knows how the, the town, uh, um, how, ta how this kind of procurement works. Paul Sainer of the Economic Development Advisory Board, who's helped us with uh, um, a lot of our uh, projects um, and zoning. Uh, Kathy Spiegelman, who's uh, Vice President uh, at uh, Northeastern, uh, formerly of Harvard, um, who's, uh, her, her field is planning and real estate and higher education. Um, Helen Charlopsky of the school committee, Georgia Johnson, uh, at the suggestion of the president of the uh, Fisher Hill Neighborhood Association, and Bobby Nabel of the advisory committee. And in, in, in trying to find folks, we were looking for some specific expertise. Uh, we weren't looking for folks involved in either pro or con of any particular issue in the past. Uh, we were looking for people who could help us analyze this uh, real estate uh, uh, transaction, help us strategize, uh, um, help us analyze it. Um, and that's, and that's kind of it. So any questions from the board? No, I think that there was one. Uh, Did I miss something? No, it's, it's just a uh, editing, uh, which is on the, uh, on the second page, um, the uh, second sub-bullet. Oh, yeah. It should, uh, the test fit, uh, the uh, estimate for two and three section schools. That should be should moved over. And I added uh, explicit uh, consideration of partnership opportunities in acquisition strategy. We have it in legal analysis, but I'm adding it to, in acquisition. to yeah. acquisition strategy. And then on the first page, this is a, smart, a minor formatting point. I think uh, the first point under legal analysis and the second point under legal analysis just needs a, a bullet point there. They're just sort of floating there. So. The yeah. assessment of known restrictions. Asse assessment of known restrictions yeah. and then general acquisition questions. I know a number of people are here interested in this. Um, if, you're, if you want to uh, say anything, yeah, come on up. Okay. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Um, well, I, I think the, t uh, the the question is how much time are we giving them? I think I, I think that's going to be determined by um, the college process, um, and that's going to drive this. I think, um, and I think it's going to happen pretty quick, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see if uh, how how the timing of the town of the town meeting fits in here because um, in effect we're kind of doing what the what the warrant articles have asked us to do or at least I think we are um, and uh, so it, it so if, if nothing else we can report a status um, you know wh wh whether we should be having a town meeting to do that you know we can that's kind of mood at this point, I guess. Um, but it is what it is. Um, what I think we're going to do, just because of the timing, um, so we'll, we'll put, we'll, we'll also probably wind up putting a, uh, a Newberry College warrant article on the May uh, uh, town meeting warrant, because we don't know how the timing is going to work. Um, so we'll have a, we'll have a placeholder in May for Newberry College, and then we'll probably have uh, our own placeholder in the April town meeting, because um, uh, the the language submitted in the warrant article is uh, flawed, shall we say? I think. 
So we, I think we need to strengthen the language and clean it up. So, um, okay, so uh, I'll move, yeah. Can I ask you how it's flawed, number one and number two? I do want to point out that it doesn't preclude other uses. It only has one use that I push for, which is I would like to see we plan for elementary growth in the town. Right. Um, and but it doesn't uh, in any way preclude other uses for that very large property. Um, the language does preclude other uses, whether or not it was your intention. So it's adequate to appropriate some or all of Newberry College property to situate an elementary school, period. Yeah, so some of it, and you can do what you want with the rest of it. Yeah, but well, unfortunately, that would be, uh, in my view, outside the scope of the warrant article. So I would, we'll fix it. Right. Right. We, we got it. We got it. We got it covered. Okay. So I'm going to move that we uh, uh, vote the charge as amended along with the members uh, as proposed. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. And we're off to the races. Now all oh, we need is money. Oh, we have to do the reserve fund transfer. Okay, so <laughs> I will move that we authorize a request for transfer from the reserve fund in order to study the town's interest in the disp disposition of the Newberry College campus, including not limited to the acquisition of all part of the campus for municipal or school purposes. And we are proposing that $150,000 uh, be the amount that should be incorporated right. in that vote. Right. So the vote should say 150,000. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. That concludes our business for tonight.